Hell yeah, guys. Whew. Let's get all this on here. Got plenty of bags to fit on here today. I thought what would be a great idea for me to do today is just tell you what I carry in each tool bag. And also, I now have an Amazon shop front as well. So if you want any of the stuff here, I've added all of it to our Amazon shop front. I've left the link to that in the description below. And also I'll leave a link to that in the comments at the top as well. Also on every video that we've got on YouTube now, I've left that shop front link on there as well. So any subsequent videos after this, you'll be able to get it. And then any videos in the past as well. How lovely is that? Guys, I will earn a miniature amount of commission out of it. Maybe enough to buy Big G a packet of dreamies, you never know. So look, let's have a look at what we've got in these tool bags. I'm gonna divide it up into the three main tool bags I've got. So I've got my long tools bag, I've got my soldering bag, and I've got my hand tools bag. This is the one that goes into the job first. So why don't we look at this one first? So then guys, a very quick look at the outside of the tool bag itself. We've got loads and loads of little places to hang things, little clips here. It does come with a shoulder sling, but I take it off. Uh, I just don't use it. We've got a really handy and robust clip for our tape measure, little places for pens, more places to hang stuff. I always hang my impact driver on here. That always lives on there just like so. I always, for some reason, have a little butter knife in there, but that's just how it is. That's who I am in it, do you know what I mean? So there you go, that's the Vito Pro Pack. We'll have a look inside it as we go along anyway. And I've already done a review on the other one online as well. If you want to buy the Vito Pro Pack, I've got it saved in my Amazon store. And I think that might be the cheapest place you can get it at the moment anyway. So, number one, the best tape measure ever in the whole world. This one I have with me at all times. This is the five meter ox tape measure. The things I like about it, number one, it's got a massive loop sort of bit over there. So you can tie it to a table really well. I mean, I think I can almost climb up a wall with this, like Batman. Also, because of its, it's got a very good bendy camber, you can extend it absolutely miles. Isn't that impressive? I think that's really, really cool. So I love this tape measure. It's just heavy, sturdy. My mate Jamie is always trying to steal it. So ox tape measure, that's in the Amazon store, along with everything that we're talking about in this video. Next up, my little baby ox hammer. Now you guys might be like, why have you got a little baby hammer? But this is my tool bag that I turn up to the job with. This is the one that comes in the house first. Rather than bringing a big old hammer with me, which I could hang through this loop here, I just had this little baby one here. It's very good for hammering stuff, obviously, but also it's got two handy, little, like a little jemmy end, and also a little, um, like a really good little prizing end. These are very good for getting nails out of floorboards, this end and that end. This end's really good for prizing floorboards up. So is this end, really. It's just a very, very handy little tool to have, just sat on the side of the bag, just like that. So that's what I have that there for. So let's open the bag and just have a look and see what we've got here. So look, you can see already how much stuff you can get into one of these Vito Pro Packs. These bags hold a lot of gear. Um, so, I mean, I've got some chisels in here that I always have. Very, very handy, sort of thing you've got, you've got to have. But also I have my screwdrivers. I prefer to use Weira screwdrivers. They are really well made. Um, these ones are the chisel end like hammer ones. The annoying thing about them is that you can't see from the top which screwdriver there is. It'd be nice and easy if they just sort of left a nick in there for a slot and maybe leave nothing for a crosshead. It would just be easy to know. But these are very, very good. They've also got a nice handy little hex on here. So you can sort of push onto a screwdriver and if it's really, really tight, get a set of adjustables or something and twist the screwdriver around. Very handy little tool. The thing is, right, I would say spend lots of money on your tools. You should always spend money on every facet of the tools that you have. But these are going to be used as everything, aren't they? They're slotted screwdrivers. They're gonna be used to prize, they're gonna be used to do stuff when I can't be bothered to reach for this. So if you're not gonna spend loads of money, you don't have to buy Weera. I'm just telling you now, obviously, I have screwdrivers of the slotted and Phillips head variety and cross head in my bag. Got my Erasmus screwdriver here. I've had this since I was an apprentice. Um, it's covered in stuff like grip fill. Yeah, it's just got stuff all over it. I've had this for yonks. I use this to open grip fill tubes. Also the cross head end, this is a cross headed end one, is so good, it just gets on every screw from the smallest to the biggest. Very, very handy tool that one is. I love having it and I can't find it online, so I'm a bit gutted. After that, we've got the Rothenberger Row Cut. These are excellent bits of kit, really, really good. I've had this one for ages. I've probably had this like seven or eight years. Um, really, really great piece of kit. It will cut all plastic pipe up to inch and a half, but if you open it up, 
and you can actually lay a bit of two inch in here and actually cut two inch with it if you sort of get good at using them. This is the original blade as well, I can tell because it's got acid burn on it for when I actually had to cut a bit of pipe that had um, like acid cleaner in it, which wasn't great. But yeah, this one I've had for ages. I've never changed the blade on it, I've just looked after it. For eight years, it's as sharp as ever. Still works really, really well. So the Rothenberger row cut, add that to your list of stuff, okay? Similarly, a tool that you can't do without, especially if you're gonna be doing lots of radiators, is the very handy Rothenberger like radiator remove tool. Now you've seen the ones where you can sort of, it's kind of a, a sort of Z shape or an S shape. Uh, this one here has got a ratchet on it. You can pop it in, it will fit all different types of radiator spigot and you can wind it in like that. And if you wanna go the other way, you just pop that off, pop it on the other way like that and then you'll be like that, okay? So these are very, very handy. When you use a tool a lot and when it does the job for you, it's worth every penny. So really, really good. I do love my little Rothenberger. I love my Rothenberger rat king. <laughs> So much. After that, something you can't do without really if you're a plumber. I don't know why it's in this side. It should be with my fluke multimeter, which is in the other side of this bag, but we'll get to that in a sec. Um, is my wire strippers. These save you yonks of time, okay? Very good for, you've got all your different wire strip sizes. You can set this to strip at different points of pressure as well. Um, I can't remember how much they were. I've put a little bit of gaffer tape around the handle on these because I felt the handle was a little bit sort of hard or something, but I'll put that on there. Hard in my dainty little pinky poop hat. Same as well, pair of side cutters, just for getting through thicker stuff. These will do everything from cutting the cage on a, on a boiler flue if you have to do it, or you know, just cutting wire really. It's what they're there for, wire strippers or side cutters. After that, a pair of long nose pliers. Um, I've left a set in the Amazon storefront and a Stanley knife, always have a Stanley knife. I have about six of these just spread around in different bags. So Stanley knife with loads of blades stored inside, different types of standing knife on the market but I've added one to the shop front as well and then lastly for this side really just a little junior hacksaw very very easy to get in there very handy piece of kit the one thing about them is the blades are awful so always make sure you've got a set of blades I usually have them in the door of the van um, and that goes the same for like cutting wheels for my pipe slices so there's side number one let's just zip up this side quickly now we'll have a look inside numero deux. So then around the other side, look what we've got here. So number one, this is a very, very handy tool. Also shows versatility of this bag as well, because you can just slip that down there and still get to everything on the top of it. Um, so yeah, we've got a handy tool here. This is a, just a Baco small socket set. So as you can see, you've got a very small little socket ratchet here, it goes both ways. What I really like about it, it's got very tight jaws on it. So you've got about 40 positions of movement on here. So it's like that and then back, like that back. So if you're trying to undo something in a very small space, you can still get those minor movements on there. Uh, I think that's really important. Also, they supply it with a little extension on here, uh, and we've got bits that go all the way from four millimeter up to 13 mil. So for lots of little nuts, boiler casings, things like that, it's really, really handy. And also what I added to it as well was a little adapter so that can actually fit on my impact driver that I've got here. So this backhoe box stays in here all the time. This is always in my toolbox. After that, we've got my weirers. So color-coded weirer Allen key. Uh, the good thing about the color coding, it's got kind of like dual purpose really. Obviously it means you can easily select what size Allen key you need by the color, but also because they look so nice when they're together, you'll do absolutely anything physically bloody possible to keep them together as a set, which is the thing that I always struggle with. I'm often losing tools because there's a lot of guys out there, right, who bum tools like mad, okay? I see tools as something you have to use, okay? They're not there to be, look, I'm not some one of them pussies who just looks after their tools. My tools get used, they get abused, and when they get broken, I buy a new set. Sounds stupid, a lot of you are gonna disagree with me, but that's the way I am. I don't have to conform to your lives. God damn! After that, right, I'm gonna whip these out of the way. Any old set of mini grips, okay? These are NARAD grips. These ones, I don't know, but they've been bloody brilliant. I've had them for years. They've stayed in the box. You can tell ones you've had for years because they just go dull. Right, we've got my Baco set. These are the adjustable spanners of the world, especially this one. This little baby one here, you will use every day of your life. It, it is just so handy. What I love about backhoes as well is you can get them wet. You can go on holiday, come back and find they've rusted a bit, spray them up and they'll just work exactly the same as they did before. So they're very, very good. Um, this is the actual set of three, which I've left in the shop bit. The only sort of drawback I'd say about the bigger ones is the fact that the jaws don't go too wide. But I've added the wide jaw set as well because I have got a set of them, but I don't know where the hell they are. Got a feeling I left them on a job last week. 
week. So yeah, there's a set of two there, the eight inch ones with the rubber handles. Uh, really, really nice. Also on top of that, I bought this one here. This is a very, very narrow jawed one, but also it will go quite wide as well. Yeah, this one goes to 30 millimeters wide. So you'll be able to get that onto like a standard 22 mil compression fitting. But also because it's so narrow, it's very handy for doing things up like, I don't know, inserts on the bottom of inch and a half radiator bits. Sometimes you have to get like a, a narrow bit on there, but just having that option is really, really handy. I really like those. So when it comes to adjustables, backhoes all the way, okay? Then when it comes to my grips, I just have my big set of Irwins, really. I do have a bigger set of grips. They go in my long tools bag, but we're talking about the hand tools bag today, really. So my little Irwins, really, really handy. I've had these for donkeys as well. I mean, you know, I don't look after my tools, as I've just said, but I spray them up every so often, and that usually keeps them alive. After that, really, really handy tool here. The one thing I'd say about it, it probably could do with a smaller handle, but it is nice in the hand. So if you're, if you're having to get quite a lot of pressure on it, then you'll find that it's pretty good for that. The great thing is, is the width of the jaw. These will go up to 50 mil wide, okay? So you're gonna be able to get these on like larger iron fittings. The thing I like about these the most, with that 50 mil wide grip, means that they will fit a pump gate valve, okay? So they'll fit that big nut on that pump gets you out of lots of trouble. After that, I've got my little Diddy boat level in here, Stanley Fat Max boat level. Guys, whatever level you buy, make sure you invest good money in a level. They are the thing that makes the job payable or not. If you've got a bad level, and a radiator looks out when you've hung it, it's very unlikely you're gonna get paid. So levels are super important. This is my Stanley one. My yellow levels that I'll use, my longer ones, I'll only buy Stabila. I don't buy any other levels. So I've left the Stabila set that I've got as well. I think I've got a 600, 800, 1200. After that, I mean, you're a builder effectively if you want like a two meter one. Then I've got my little fluke here, my fluke tester. Um, this has got paint flex on it. The one thing I love about it is auto turns off if you leave it on the voltage bit or on any of the other settings. Um, so you don't waste battery. I just really like it. I've had it for years. The one annoying thing I suppose slightly that I find is a bit annoying is that if you are testing something with two prongs, that's hanging upside down. I've had it ages. I probably should get a new one. <laughs> It still works fine. It tells me if I'm gonna die if I touch that bit of wire or not, or whether I'm not gonna die. Um, and it gets calibrated, so it's still happy, still fine. Then I've got my little stubby screwdrivers down here that are just stubby screwdrivers. But then after that, we've got my lovely set of B-Deck profilers that you guys have seen me use in loads of plumber parts videos. I use these for doing all my silicon work. Uh, and they'll just live in that little box there. That's where they live down there. So if we whip out all that we've got here, just take some time, including this, the amount of kit we've got in this one little bag. And I'll be honest with you, because it's so narrow, the weight of it is close to your body. If it was wide and the weight was out wide, it'd be more difficult to walk into a house with, and it'd also put more strain on your shoulder and your arm. But because it's such a narrow bag, it, it feels like there's less weight. It, I just can't describe it. If you haven't got, or if you're thinking about buying a new tool, bag for your running into the job, your first tool bag, um, you know, the one that you just have as your main sort of call out and service bag. I cannot recommend the Tech MCT enough. It's in the shop front, like I said. So then guys, that's all the stuff that I take in my Tech MCT. I've probably missed some tools out. I mean, obviously pens and stuff like that. If you think we've missed anything out, please comment and I will add it to the shop so you guys know like what pencils I use because I do use a certain type of pencil. Rexel, Black Edge. I add those pencils to it as well. Rexel are really good. They don't break. They're not broken. Uh, and the pencils don't just split apart like they usually do. So now let's swap over to my soldering bag. <sighs> oh yeah, see look, we're looking at that. Beautiful, I don't tend to have as many bits in the fronts or sides of this one. Usually have a standing knife in there, don't know where that's gone. And that's actually the same for the other side round. But really what we wanna be concentrating on on this one is how we store everything in this bit here. This is what we're on about, okay? So first up, what I've got in here, I have my little fluctuators. I've done a review on these before. I just had the 22 mil one, but they actually listened to everyone out there. They listened to us installers, and they said, right, we're now gonna make a 22 and 15 mil head all in one. So they've now effectively done themselves out of selling one of these. Um, but that's great because they're a brilliant company. You know, I mean, I, might, I wrote one of the best songs in plumbing for them. Yes, my love. So 
So yeah, Fluxuate are a really, really good tool. I like them because they keep the flux where it should be, either inside the actual applicator or on the pipe. So there we go, number one on the list there is the Fluxuator. And that for me sits either side of my soldering torch because obviously the soldering torch comes out, I'm gonna need my flux anyway. Um, so I guess the next thing that we'd like to quickly look at is the soldering torch that I use. So that is a Rothenberger Superfire 2. Very, very good bit of kit. Uh, these are really common on the market. Uh, you can get them in most stores, really. Um, I've had this one for donkey's years. Make sure, if you are gonna use this, you don't stand it on end while you're soldering a radiator near someone's carpet, because that will go over and burn a hole in the carpet. Yet again, you've suddenly made no money that day. Propane on here. Um, I tend to use the hotter flame. So there is the soldering torch that I use, the Rothenberger Superfire 2. Now then, guys, little secret. Little secret here. Brasso, okay? I always have Brasso in my box. This makes the difference between a, a standard plumber and someone who just wants everything to look absolutely pucker. So Brasso is great. You can get it everywhere, but I have left it on the shop as well. So you can get that there. Then we've got my very old, very knackered heat mat. I mean, usually a heat mat for me lasts about, I don't know, if I'm lucky, six months. Also in this box, I usually have my Stanley hammer. So I've got my anti-vibe hammer. This is like my main work hammer. Another little thing I like about it, I guess, is it's got a magnet here. So you can lay a nail in there and then just go doink like that and smack the nail in, as in like a tap tack or something like that, and then hit it in properly. So what I like about the bag, this bag here, is the fact that you've got a pull out case like this. And in there, you can then put all your pipe slices. So I've got my, my 22, my 15, and I've got my little mini pipe slice. I've left links to these as well. Um, and I've also, for some reason, got a pen knife that's jammed down the bottom of there, but there we go. But that's really handy. I do have a 28 mil pipe slice, but that's in another compartment back in the van. I have like a box of fittings of 28 mil. Uh, and when I'm using that, that's where the slice lives. It lives actually in the fittings box. So it's just my way of doing things so I don't lose it. I also keep my pipe bending formers in here as well. A Little bit of wire wool, really handy. Some backup flux as well if I need it. And some emery cloth as well. So this is a simple bag, right? When I have my soldering bag, that is all it's for this bag, is to keep my soldering gear in there. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot as well, is for some reason this is in here. It shouldn't be in here, it should be in the long tools bag, but there we go. Um, yeah, just your standard tap spanner, really from Ox. Um, they get used as hammers sometimes. That's my, that's my bad thing. I'm gonna pop that over here anyway. It shouldn't be in there. Oh yeah, and also wet rag. Always have a wet rag in there for that. Right and guys, so we've done that. I just wanna show you some of the other tools I have that I think a few of you guys have asked me, like what ones are those you use? So I've got my levels here as well. So there's the 120 level. Uh, very, very good level set, Stabilas are. And then I've got like a smaller one. This is really handy for doing your, your uprights on radiators, but sometimes even a small radiator, you've still got to use a boat level. Um, then when it comes to the benders I use, I did move over to Rothenberger benders, having used a set of Irwins for years. The Rothenberger ones were literally nowhere near as good as the Irwins. So I'm back with my Irwins now. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, yeah, top pieces of kit. Long slotted Stanley screwdriver. I'll see if I can find one. If I can, I'll put it in the shop front. You've got to have one. It'll undo the nuts on the end of pumps. It'll undo anything, basically. It'll prize anything. I even use it to chip off bits of like sulfur when I'm servicing oil boilers. Um, and then when it comes to my silicon gun, always buy a good silicon gun, all right? Spend about 10 to 15, 20 quid maybe on one. This is a roughneck one, absolutely brilliant. I mean, I love it. I've had it years, it works really well. It gives a nice, properly controlled slow bead of silicon out. But also if you want, you can pop the, the trigger on here and it will stop it instantly. So it's a very, very good bit of kit. Also it takes um, longer silicon tubes as well. So really handy for that. Absolutely love this bead. It's wicked. Very quick look at the uh, the bigger one. This is the Tech XL. So a much bigger bag. This really now is my sort of bits and bobs, odds and sods bag. Uh, it doesn't have loads in it. One of the sides is pretty much free of stuff at the moment, but I'm actually going to probably pop a bit in it now. So I have things like 22 mil olive strippers, um, spare set of cutters, spare 15 mil um, cutters as well, pencils, bits and bobs like that. What I'll tend to do is lay the tools in here, but what I've done, in fact, I'll pop this in there now. I tend to have more in this side because this sits in one side of the van. For some reason, I've got an anti-hammer device in here. I have no idea why. Um, I've got my bigger 
cutter on here as well. This will go up to 35 mil, so that's handy. Um, then I've got my smaller pipe benders as well, very handy for oil work. That would do six, eight, and 10 millimeter copper. And then I've got footies, sets of footies. I don't tend to use footies loads, but they're there if I need them. Another standy knife, actual spanners. Yeah, another standy knife, 22 mil cutter, small set of stillos and then my butte line crimpers as well. So that's what goes in there. And that is pretty much it for like my usual sort of day-to-day -day hand tools. So this bag here is the big one. Here is my soldering bag. And then last and by no means least is my absolutely wicked Tech MCT. So there you go guys, we've had a look at all the sort of daily basis kind of tools that we use. We've got my hand tools bag here in the absolutely fantastic Tech MCT. We've got my soldering bag here, which is absolutely brilliant as well. The open tote beast is very good. And then we've got our Tech XL here that's got like longer tools in it. Uh, but the one that's with me every day of the year is this one. Even if I go away in the car and I don't take the van, this bag gets put in the car as well, just in case I've got a breakdown, something like that. It might be able to get a battery terminal off or something like that. We've also got some of my levels and bits and bobs there, but all these things that we've shown you today, you can get in our Amazon shop front. So click on the link below, pop over to Amazon. So thanks ever so much for watching guys. Please subscribe. If you've got any questions, comments, or you think you've missed something out, or you're like, hmm, do you use this type of tool, that type of tool, anything like that? Or if you've got any requests for videos you'd like us to make about the plumbing industry, plumbing products, plumbing instructionals, bits and bobs like that, please comment below we read all of your comments. Also, if you're not fed up with my seriously annoying voice, then you can pop over to my vlog channel as well, at Times with James. I'll be leaving a link to that below in the cards and everywhere else. The next video I do on Times with James will be in Berlin and it will also get to visit an old Stasi prison, which will be very interesting. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. Please follow us on over on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Remember, everybody, that one thing you've got to do, baby. That's hold tight. See you soon. Bruh.